Hello everyone. In the previous video, we learned about what is a memory and what are different types of memory like primary and secondary. And in this video, we're going to learn about memory management techniques. So there are two common memory management techniques. The first one is overlay and second is swapping. Okay, so let's start with the overlay. So what is overlay? Well, the concept of overlay states that it will not use the complete program simultaneously, which means whatever part of the program you need, you load it. And once the part is done, you unload it. So in memory management, overlay works in the following steps. First, we divide the program into modules like small chunks. A small portion of the program must remain in the memory at all time for the execution of the programs, while the remaining sections called overlays are loaded as per the need. Now, why do you think we do this? Well, the reason for this is because the space for the memory is limited. And sometimes if we have larger program, it could be difficult to run all of them at the same time. So that is why we use the concept of overlay because it allows the programmers to write programs larger than the physical memory. And the memory usage really depends on the programmer rather than the operating system. So the programmer manages that. All right, so let's take an example. Well, the best example of overlay is assemblers. Let's say that there is an assembler having two passes, pass one and pass two. Pass one code size is 80 KB and pass two code size is 90 KB. Now, as I mentioned earlier, there are certain part of the program that always needs to stay in the memory for the execution of different processes. So we must have symbol table, which has the size of 30 KB. And we also must have common routine for both the passes, which is 20 KB. So let's say that we have a main memory and the main memory size is 150 KB. Okay, so assume in the hypothetical situation, we have a main memory size of 150 KB. If we try to run both the programs, which is pass one and pass two, what will be the total? So you can see 80 plus 90 plus 30 plus 20. How much does that come to? Well, it comes to 200 KB. So if we try to run both of them together, which is pass one and pass two, we understand that if our main memory size is only 150 KB, there is no way we will be able to accommodate that. Okay, so what's the solution? Well, the solution is that, well, this is where the overlay concept is useful. So overlay concept says that do not bring the entire program at once in the main memory. Bring it in parts as in when you need it. Okay, so when pass one is needed, you bring the pass one, then take it out once it's finished executing and then bring the pass two. Okay, so bring only one at a time, not together. So let's see how we can achieve that. And let's see if that solves the problem. Okay, so now if we bring pass one, so pass one size will be 80 KB. Uh, again, like I said, symbol table, common routine, these program need to stay in the memory. And for overlay concept, we need to have the overlay driver also. So 30 plus 20 plus 10, this needs to be there in the main memory for both programs. That's why I put that in both situations. So in situation one, when we have the pass one, we run, when we are running pass one, the total size becomes 80 plus 30 plus 20 plus 10, which is 140. And pass two becomes 90 plus 30 plus 20 plus 10, which is 150 KB. Now, if we have the memory partition of 150 KB, then that means that we can run each of these passes individually very easily. Okay, so that's how overlay concept is useful to manage the memory. All right, so let's say that so we have operating system, we have the resident code, and then we have the overlay area. And overlay one can come into the overlay area with which has the code and data when it needs to be executed. Once it's done, it moves out. And then overlay two comes in into the overlay area as in one needed. So one at a time. Okay. Now we're going to discuss the concept of swapping. So what is swapping? Well, swapping is a memory management technique in which any process can temporarily be swapped from the main memory to the secondary memory. Okay. And this is done so that the main memory can be made available for other processes. So let's say we have this main memory and secondary memory. We have different processes. Uh, so for now, let's say in main memory, we have process P1 and P2. Uh, and in the secondary memory, we have P3, P4 and up to PN. So different processes. Now, 
let's say there is a request for p3 and at that point we do not have the p3 available in the main memory and okay so at that point we don't have the p3 in the main memory so what is going to happen is we have a concept of swap out and swap in so in swap out we'll have one process move from the main memory to the secondary memory and then in the swap in we'll have a process move from the secondary memory to the to the main memory so over here process p1 moves out it goes for input output wait and process p3 comes in okay and then after the input output operation uh, when we need we can again send the p3 back to secondary memory using swap out and then we can bring in the process one uh, back in so that is your swap in and swap out right so that's a concept of swapping so let's take an example let's say that the user process size is 2048 kb and the standard hard disk which is the secondary memory has a transfer rate of 1 mbps per second for swapping so if we calculate the time it will take to transfer that process from the main memory to secondary memory if we calculate that well it will be the process size divided by the transfer rate which comes to around 2048 kb divided by uh, 1 mbps or 1024 kbps that makes a total of 2048 divided by 1024 which is 2 seconds uh, if we consider both swapping and swap out then it will take around 4 seconds for both swap in and swap out to complete 